In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All of our Gospels include the story of Jesus' baptism, starting with John the Baptist, starting with him out in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance and drawing people out to him. Each of our Gospelers believe that that was an important preface to Jesus' work. And they all begin his work with his baptism. Actually, our window tells us more about Jesus' baptism than Luke does, because Luke goes right to after Jesus' baptism and what happens next. We don't get the story of Jesus and John standing in the River Jordan, but I'm pleased that we have this window because it speaks to the center of our mission and our commission um, as Christians. So Luke starts off not with Jesus' baptism itself, because, but with the Holy Spirit and the voice of God. You notice it's Jesus came, he was baptized with everyone else, and then he goes to pray. And that's where it gets interesting, because that is when the Holy Spirit speaks, comes down as the dove, and we hear God's voice. Now what do we learn? So many theologians really struggle with why Jesus, who was completely sinless and the Son of God, had to present himself for baptism. In the Incarnation, I believe that Jesus came to be with us, Emmanuel, as we celebrated Christmas, God with us. And we see in Luke's story that Jesus was with us in that moment, that he presents himself with all of the riffraff. He presents himself with the dregs of society. He's not, there's no special moment for him. He's just one among all these people who have come out to the wilderness to receive this baptism that John is proclaiming. And there he is, being baptized, amongst everyone else, and then goes off to pray. The, in this incarnation, he shows that he is one of us. He shows that he is in solidarity with all the people, that he identifies with the broken people of God and presents himself as among the broken people of God. We see his commitment in that way. <coughs> And then we see what led to this epiphany. Prayer. The inbreaking of God and the Holy Spirit happen when Jesus is in prayer. The heavens open and the dove descends and Jesus hears God's voice or the people hear the God's voice. We're not even sure which. Jesus shows us here how to live connected to the source of strength and the source of spiritual stamina that is in our prayer that we receive the Holy Spirit, that we hear God's voice, and that we are given what we need to be empowered in our mission and in our vocation as Christians, that we are sustained and empowered in prayer by the Holy Spirit. So many of us forget and we get stretched and stressed and the thing that we don't do is pray and that is really at our peril because those are the moments when we need it the most. You know it's the person who goes to the gym every day and then something happens and they get stressed and they stop. The person who meditates every day and then suddenly life gets too stressful and they don't have time for meditation and then they wonder why they're falling apart. Same thing with us. We need to remember to pray because that is how we are empowered and connected to the Holy Spirit. And then we hear the identity of Jesus affirmed. You are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. We all need to hear that. I believe Jesus needed to hear that. Before he was thrown out into the wilderness, these are the words he heard. You are my chosen one. I love you. I am proud of you. 
amazing words for Jesus to have heard and empowering words for all of us. Don't we all want to hear those words? I think we all need our identity affirmed and confirmed in that way. Many of you may have been here uh, one Sunday in the past couple of years when Deacon Hank brought a picture that he had made for his son Clark at his birth. And the picture was, he, he wet his hands with, uh, with and he says I can tell his story. Uh, he, has, he, he wet his hands with white paint and put them down onto the paper and so formed the shape of a dove and wrote on this picture, you are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. What a gift to give to your child. I don't know about any of you, but as I was listening, I was thinking, darn, why did I ever think to do that? <laughs> and then I was thinking, darn, why did my father ever do that? <laughs> Both things at the same time, because we all need to hear those words. If we are going to be empowered, if we are going to be strengthened, if we are going to live out our mission as Christians, we need to take those words in. We need to know that we are beloved children of God, that God is pleased with us, and we can't hear that enough. And we can't tell our children that enough, I don't believe, because it is so important to live our lives from that sense of a strong identity as a child of God. Jesus needed that affirmation, I believe, and we, each of us, needs that affirmation. So we see that baptism really matters. Some of you maybe were baptized as adults, anyone? No, yeah, a couple, a couple, yeah. So maybe you can remember it. For, for most of us, it's something that happened Way back when, when we were children, we had no say in it. Our parents brought us. And for me, I was baptized not on a Sunday morning because before the new prayer book, it wasn't done on Sunday morning. Baptisms were private in the Episcopal Church just like they still are in the Roman Church. So, so we don't really think about it, but it matters. And we're shown here why baptism matters. It matters because what it says about each of us it says that we belong to God, that we have been marked as Christ's own forever and empowered for mission, empowered for ministry, and that that is the source of our calling and the source of our purpose. It says something about the church. It says something about the church as the place where we live that out, the place that we come together to be strengthened, to strengthen each other, and to live into our ministry as a community, as the body of Christ. Christ's body, Christ's tangible presence in this world, the church, the place where our children now are baptized in the midst of the community, and each of us promise to be with them and to support them in their life in Christ. And it tells us something about the grace of God. God's grace for all. God's grace for all of those people who came and presented themselves as broken sinners and received that baptism from John of repentance and turned to new life. The new life that was coming, the new life that Christ brought and brings continually over and over to all of us through that power of the Holy Spirit that we access in prayer and in community. God's grace for each of us. So all of this begins with baptism. Baptism lived out, baptism and the practice of prayer, baptism and knowing that we are each beloved children of God and claiming and owning that identity. You can do so much when you know that you have a strong foundation and that is what we are given in our baptism, that surety that God is with us, that the Holy Spirit empowers us, sustains us, and that we are shown by Jesus how to live that out in prayer, in faithfulness, in community, and in the knowledge that we are each beloved children of God. Amen. Amen.